Hi. So, I'm um, at Floyd Bennett Field, and we are doing a rocket launch. Today we are testing um, uh, Goddard. Here's the rocket. And I was here a few weeks ago with Max and Cooper, my nephews, and um, we were testing uh, Jesus Christ, also with Chris Beeston. And um, we are going to have, this is going to be a really long, boring, surveillance style um, launch. I'm also here with Charlie Coss. And here we are. Oops, Floyd Bennett Field. Now, what do you think? Are we going to go horizontal or vertical? We Choose go. now. Respond now. Horizontal or vertical? First person calls it. What do you think, Charlie? I think horizontal. All right, horizontal it is. Okay, let's clamp it in. Also, um, all comments about shoes will be um, banned, blocked, and you will potentially be deleted. So, um, just stop talking about it. Everyone's saying vertical. Everyone's saying vertical today. Oh, no, someone says horizontal. I like horizontal. We're going horizontal. Because that way, if we go horizontal, we can do, use it on YouTube later. Is that what you're thinking? All right, but we gotta get this clamp going better. All right, Charlie, here, you make that good. I'm gonna start weighing out. Get, get really right in here so the wind's good. Okay. And I'm gonna start weighing out this rocket. Adam Steltzner um, and I did some math. Actually, he did some math and I listened and pretended like I understood. But the bottom line is we are going to take this rocket using these D12 zeros, and we're going to do a liftoff. The rocket's gonna go under thrust, and then come back down and land on its feet, um, SpaceX style. And if there's too much thrust, it'll kind of um, launch and fly and land. If there's too little, it won't get off the ground. So that the only way we can adjust that is with, by adjusting the mass. Um, when we edit this together, we'll make a little video. If you want to see the uh, unedited, good version of this, just stop watching now, and in a few weeks, something will be organized. But the basic math is the only thing we can adjust is the weight. So we're going to start with these, and these are, again, these are SD's D12 zeros. You can look up the amount of newtons, but it's like basically thrust for like a second on a fraction. And um, we're going to start at 1,200, I'm sorry, 1,500 grams. So we're adding four, because we have to do, add four of these. All right, and then let's, four one ounces, and then we need to add some bolts. So one, two, three, four. You get right in there, Charlie. And then four wing nuts. One, two, three, three, four. Okay, we're almost at 1,500. So what are we gonna add? So we add four more ounces, it's gonna be too many. So let's add, what do you think? Four um, washers. Four washers. Um, three, four. Mm, we can also add here, we could add four more um, screws. So, um, or we, you know, here, let's add, let's add eight more washers, right? So. Almost there. And then what if we add four more screws? And then four more wing nuts. Do we have a second tier of weights? All right, I'm gonna say that's pretty close. That's 1,500, and there's some wind here, and eight grams. I guess we could we could remove. Well, I think that's it. 1,508 grams.
You guys let you like that? So this is gonna be super long and boring. And we'll assemble this. Um, do you, Charlie, do you like my, my math here? Yeah. Screws are size uh, 1024. We got these lead weights at the fishing supply store, which used to be below the Chelsea Hotel. Um, and the Chelsea Hotel is where Sid Vicious stabbed Dancy Sponge to death. And the fishing store and the guitar store used to be below that. Um, but those are gone. Now the fishing store is on, um, I think, 36th Street. It's kind of cool that, you know, we get um, to buy our fishing weights there on a Friday afternoon when everyone's getting ready to go off for the weekend. We rush. Matt Shapiro, the hero, rode his bike there. Can everyone hear me okay? Thanks. Can everyone hear Tom? Questions while I'm doing this. I'm not as good as AVE at ad libbing, but by the way, he edits, which is the only respectful thing to do. But that's the difference between YouTube and Instagram. So you get to deal with a real time surveillance thing. A um, little more info. Can people hear me? Yeah. Um, we've got an opening this Thursday night from 6 to 8 at Sperony Westwater and I'm not promising but potentially if we get our shit together today Charlie and I are going to do a launch in the street we're also sorry that Chris Beeston isn't here because we did a lot of this development with Chris and he and I built this rocket um, together um, so let's see how this is going to work Big washers and another wing nut. Um, so the show at Sperony Westwater is called Objects of Devotion, and it's a series of uh, cabinets. In German are called Wunder Cap Cabinets, and they're like wonder cabinets, and they're just collections of things that I've sort of been devoted to over the years. And today it's going to be all about the rocket cabinet because I love my rocket. And. Um, this rocket is named after Goddard. So, after doing a little research, I discovered that the same guy who invented French New Wave cinema also invented liquid fuel rockets. It's really crazy that it's the same person. Um, so, we thought this was a great opportunity to combine our interests and make a rocket based on um, Goddard. This one is particularly based on Goddard's first famous rocket and you can if you look him up the famous pictures of him um, in area 51 roswell what became area 51 roswell new mexico laughed out of worcester polytechnic where he was a professor because he had these ideas that you could make rockets out of liquid fuel and take them to other worlds like mars um, but of course now he uh there are buildings and kinds of important things and awards named after Goddard. So let's weigh it again, double check. Nothing should have changed, but this was, I think, supposed to be uh, 1,508. Hello. Hi. Hey. You guys aren't supposed to be back this way with the vehicle. Okay. All right. Can we? That's why they got the barriers there. Oh, I didn't see any signs. <laughs> That's why they have the barriers there. Uh, All right, so. You can get up over here on that side of the barrier. Set up over there mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but you should be back here. Or at least find you back here. There's a bus. Okay, can we physically be back here? For more yeah, yeah, physically, but not, the but not the vehicle. Okay, so we could park right over there on the other side of the uh, barrier. The barriers, we can park there. Yep. Okay. And when you say they'll bust us, what do you think? They'll give you a ticket. Will they? Will they arrest us? No, they'll give you a ticket. Do you know what kind of ticket? Uh, an expensive ticket, and it's a federal. 
I think the only reasonable thing is to keep keep going until we get busted. That guy's cool, and we have to risk it just because we're so close. What do you think? Sure. What's the alternative? Let's get the yeah. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, but I do want to get my ID ready, so when they um, are upset, let's keep keep following me around. Right. People are watching this still. 120. Oh my god. Okay, we load a D12 uh, zero and we get uh, where are the igniters? Um, and then just to be clear, we've got three D12 zeros in this pack. We've got those two D12 zeros. We've got these are D12 threes. The three refers to the pause between the reverse charge for blowing out the parachute. I don't know if there's a difference. We're going to test it and see. Um, sorry. Uh, I'll just open this back. Do we have a um, package of um, igniters? I don't want to open that pack until we need it. Just because um, I just want to keep it nice and tidy. Okay, here we go. D12 zero. Here are two igniters. So keep that together. And then. Oh shit. Okay, well, it's in there. This little clip is all it's holding it in. I didn't expect that. That's a lot of force. But it's not more than the weight of this rocket. So let's just see what happens. Okay. Now, let's leave this in here. Go for some drilling. Is the overhead camera on the roof set up? Uh, it's set up. I'll start rolling. Turn it on. So, okay. So, we made a special 316 inch rod, stainless steel, for the launch tower. We're gonna drill it out with this masonry bit. We've got our Greg Vane 
um, ignition system. We've got this little screen for protecting the camera from close-up blast. So let's see. We're gonna get rid of the multi chuck, which I was gonna use for like lightning. concrete. The concrete gets harder and harder and harder over a hundred years, so new concrete's soft and old concrete's hard, so this has gone really slowly. And then I'm going to drill a second one. Do we want to do the angle thing into the wind? I feel like that's so crazy with those fins. It's going to get jammed on the tower. I'm going to go for it. service damaging your caulk But then no, because we wanted to get come come back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, this is our van. The mattress is so good. It fits a whole sheet of plywood. So the rocket weight, just to remind you, is 1,508 grams. 
right? And according to Dr. Stelzner's calculations, this thing should lift off the ground and um, land on its own feet under thrust the entire time. That's the plan. Got it? So if anyone asks again, someone else please retype that in. Because this is going to take a little while. And we've got seven shots of D12 uh, motors. we got, I think, four D12 zeros and two D12 threes. But the park um, police warned us that we have to leave because the federal police is going to kick us off. Because we're not allowed, it's not that we're not allowed to do this, we're not, just not allowed to park here and it's really fucking sunny. We've got a ton of gear and I want to use the back of the van as our equipment. Here's the rocker, the rocket. It says 1268, but we've added these lead weights so that it's 1508, 1508 grams. And we have adjustable weights so that we can tune this. It's the only bit of latitude we have. We've got this extra thick, thick stream urethra launch tower. Um, slot and let's bring this um, onto the launch pad. volts are just more than enough to set off the electric Contact. Let's bring this back over to our safe distance. You do work that. I'll do. I'll work Instagram. You get the. You get the real shot. So we have about, we'll check the video, but it looks like we've got about four to six inches.
inches of vertical lift um, 1508 grams we're going to strip everything down next um, to uh, whatever 1280 uh, that nose cone blasting off is exactly what we planned for that's just the indication that the engine thrust is off and uh, it's the reverse charge that's normally what blows out the parachute kind of hilarious so let's reload strip this thing down um, my immediate feedback is that the whole thing's too heavy and we're going to be using that multi-bit that step bit and drilling this thing out to save weight which I fucking do and it's super annoying Good scarification though. Okay. I also think we don't need that launch tower, but did keep it on the thing. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's um, go back and strip it down. There's our cone. Um, you want to just follow me? Charlie, is it too distracting to do it with an aeration for Instagram, or you think it's good? I think it's good. And it's a little long, you know. It's the thing about science versus entertainment is the only real difference is editing. Um, it takes a long time to get real data. And, um, and uh, that's... Oh, wait. Adam Stelzner said we should test the same rocket three times. And Chris Beeson confirmed that because these rocket engines are made in China in a factory. But I think we, I'm just gonna go ahead and say fuck it because we got so little thrust, it really went off the ground only by a few inches. That's just not enough for me. So I'm just gonna skip ahead to the next step. And the, the point is, you, you test because you can only change one variable at a time if you're gonna get consistent results. So if we, what we're, if we're a real scientist, what we would do is test that rocket engine three separate times to make sure it lifted off the same six inches. That's just such a anti-climax um, of, of an effect, that six inches, that uh, I'm just going to go ahead and strip these weights off. Um, sorry, science. <laughs> but it's also the difference between our space program and the other NASA, right? So, like, those guys do the right thing. They send one thing at a time, one rocket at a time. They don't put bait on it. I don't know why Viking didn't have bacon strapped to its legs so that you'd see some potential bugs. Something to make you want, something to make those bugs want to come and, and get close to a camera. It's called bait. I think you talked Sagan out of it. I think it was a mistake. We don't really have time. All of the missions have to be executed in four years. One political cycle, because the next fucking president comes along who might be a good guy probably a bad guy, but he might be a good guy. He might not, his politics and the people who elected him might not be in favor of NASA. And, you know, we've got a, we've got bigger problems than um, than the American political system. We've got to save the planet. And um, so that's why I'm skipping ahead to go with a D-12-0 with minimum weight, 1,268 grams. Um, if we want less weight, we're going to take out that multi-bit and we're going to drill out these um these uh these holes to shave an extra gram or ten. Charlie, do you have any objections to any of what I'm doing? No. If Chris or Olivia or Adam or Tom or Tommaso Rivellini or Kevin Hand or Greg Vane or any of the people who worked on this project in particular with the um, propulsion part have any objections and you're watching or you're in touch with them, please someone give a feedback and let us know. Because, um, um, we're, again, we're racing against the imminent arrival of the federal police <laughs> <laughs> on federal land and we're definitely going to get kicked out. So let's just see how many launches we get and really what I'm weighing here is the effect of the sun burning my skin versus a court appearance. I think it's worth it because skin cancer um, will kill you as quickly as anything else. Okay, so let's just see how this this butt plug really was really rough. One thing we didn't draw pliers. Uh, yeah, a ramrod
so I'm going to disassemble it. Can you get me, please, a adapter tape there and then... Okay, I figured out what was wrong. I was supposed to epoxy this ring on. Do we need cap on? Uh, cap. I'll cap on. I do at the end, but what I'd like to do is. Do we have crazy glue? Yeah. so I don't glue the housing to the body of the rocket engine. Okay, that's good. Is this still wet? Okay, let's wait another second. Um, all right, so while we're doing this, let's pack in another igniter and then another butt plug. Slow-mo. Okay, so, so I'm gonna reset it.
Greg Vane is the like head of solar systems projects at um, Jet Propulsion Laboratory. He knocked on my door one day and he said, let's not go back to the moon, let's go to Mars. We've been friends ever since and he sort of organized our unofficial residency at Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Greg is uh, recovering from flipping his Porsche on I-5 uh, multiple times. He broke his back in multiple places. He's wearing a halo. Um, Sarah asked him, um, are you okay? How does it feel? Are you really uncomfortable? And Greg's answer was, um, the halo is way more comfortable than a coffin. So um, speedy recovery, Greg. We're going to check in on you soon, but just want to give, you a, give everyone a heads up here that... Um, uh, uh, a lot of this wouldn't be happening without Greg's involvement, so thanks, Greg. Okay, we're ready for launch number two. We are ready. Okay, and launch number two is um, sort of the naked rocket with no extra weight. Standing by. Give us a five countdown. Standing by for rocket launch in five, four, safety off, three, safety. two, one, ignition. Okay. Fuck. Alright, so we gained a little weight, and... Alright, bottom line, guys, we know what's gonna happen here. Um, we're gonna have to use the F. Right? Should we just skip ahead? I think so. Because we drill that out, we save... What? marginal like 5 grams, grams and we're going to weaken the structure so much. So, um, it works. It's the right idea. But we want more height. Now, the thing about the F is didn't do the math on it. There's a data sheet. I looked it up, but I didn't even print it out. And I definitely didn't show it to Dr. Steltzner. And um, I think um, I think that's not right. But I don't know. It's sunny out, and we want to finish it with this monster. Okay, an F15. With an eight, with an eight count delay. I think that's eight seconds. Oh, you think that that's you think that that rod is causing enough friction to make a difference? Come on, really? We we'll just wrote that. Just can I scroll back and see? Uh, yeah. Okay. Bailey Brazier, take away the rod as it's on an angle, and when the rocket takes off vertically, it's rubbing and causing friction. Not enough to matter. Right, don't you think, Charlie? No, I don't think it matters. I don't think it's, you know, I'm not denying that there isn't friction there, Bailey Brazier, but I don't think it's enough to make a difference. Um, all right. F. All right. F. 15-8 is 55 Newton seconds. All right, the last one we had was 20 Newton seconds. All right, it's got a 3.4 second thrust versus a 1.6 second thrust. All right, it weighs 60 grams, and the other one weighs 24 grams. All right, so we've got sort of twice the Newtons and twice the time. So probably the same motor, just twice as big. Um, we gotta make a decision, guys. Do we add the weights back to the beginning, or do we launch her naked? Any, any answers? Naked? Okay, obviously we all want to do it naked. All right, let's do it naked. Science is like we should add the weights and, and be conservative, but let's do it naked. Just to be clear, everyone says naked. Okay, you know we're going to do it, but we only have 
two of these and they're kind of rare so it's kind of hard to get them battery so we're gonna go naked Charlie can you while I load this up can you get the external battery and like duct tape it so because we're at 20% and um okay so we take out this whole assembly this is the this is a spent D and the adapter and then here is the uh, F15 monster all right couple things that are not cool about this there's no stop it's gonna shove its way up so I think what we need to do is drill a little stopper um, and there is that drill bit uh, yeah, in my bag, in the white zip bag, there is um, there's a, a battery in there, and it's got a cord integrated into it, um, and it's like that little white um, mafia bag. Bag made by Marcos Mafia, San Francisco, California. Is that sweet? Okay. And wasn't there a drill bit? Can I throw that drill bit in here somewhere? That's really critical. The masonry? No, the regular drill bit. Step on? No. Oh, well, okay. You know what? Fuck okay. it. All right, we can use the step. But before we get the step, I'd there was a there's a regular drill bit that was the one that was used to drill out the lead weights. So, um, um, and we need that because we need to install a stopper. So, of course, we've made a huge mess here because we're going fast. But the reason why I need that drill bit is this motor is going to just launch its way up through this, through the, the tube. So I'm going to drill like roughly here and bolt all the way through so it can't go up. In fact, I want to do it right there. So can you just start like nulling and go on? Fuck it. This is just too big of a thing. is 14 there's a lot of winds so the scales jumping out but I'm gonna call it 1401 including the motor we didn't take data on the first two but we will remember those famous last words but the fourth is 1401 engine is an F15 and then um, we made that one little modification with a stop okay Let's get the butt plug ready. Got the butt plug, and then we've got a, we need a um, igniter. Gonna work, right? 
Those for F's? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The same. Make sure it's like scoop them enough to do the job. You do not want to fuck around. Oh yeah, they're different. They are different. Color. Don't know if it's different. This is the first time I'm doing an F. You've all experienced A's and B's and D's. And now we're going for an F. Alright, this is more than double the thrust of last time. You read? Alright, Chris, this is for you. riding tightrope walker where the, the trick is that the center of gravity is below the weight of the, um, of the of the wire so it always stays upright it's like has to stay upright here you have a little bit of like wandering back and forth and once it gets once it gets, once it gets sideways to a certain degree then the thrust brings it over and then it lands but
if we launch again with our second F, we're gonna get similar results. It'll be chaotic, but it's un it's unstable, and this is it's even even less stable now. Yeah, yeah. But it's also the what, what we've proven is this isn't safe to do, and 